Kia ora everyone, my name's Zach, I love rugby, welcome back to Hucker Time Rugby. The All Blacks have named their squad and they've gone for the 5-3 split. Contrast that to the Springboks, we've gone for the 7-1 split and we have a real clash of styles. To Fozzie's credit, he has held his nerve, he is playing to the strengths of the All Blacks and when you look at that 7-1 split selection and you think what's going to come late in the game, you thought there was real some real temptation for them to tinker with the squad selection, their squad makeup, but you know I just want to give Fozzie a bit of credit, he has held his nerve and he is prepared prepared for the All Blacks to play their style and to play their style whether we win the championship or not. So credit goes to that man and um, and and now I'm going to break down the teams because I think uh, there's some really interesting talking points particularly off the bench um, and it's very clear how the All Blacks are going to play this game. So I'm going to break it down for you guys now. I did the same for the Springbok squad selection so if you haven't seen that go back and check it out because I explain some of the risk factors for that Springbok selection. I also explain um, areas that they can have great success. Now looking at the All Blacks squad first things first the 15 is as expected, it is as we predicted. So Brody Retallick comes in for Sam Whitelock, who comes in off the bench. And if we just focus on the forward pack for a minute, this is a forward pack that we have seen dominate in really, really testing games. So they gave a great account of themselves against Ireland at lineout, at scrum, and at the breakdown. We've seen them in other big games at the start of the year, um, earlier in the year, I should say, against the Springboks. Um, and the inclusion of Retallick and Frizzell is huge for the makeup and the construct of this of this forward pack. The balance of the back row in particular, you've got the big body Frizzell, you've got the athleticism of Severe, you've got the experience and breakdown work and now physical um, defensive uh, abilities of a Sam Kane, who with his back problems resolved is fully fit and ready to go. I love the makeup of this team. And then you've got Brody Retallick, obviously, who brings just a bit of mongrel and go forward. And then you've got um, Scott Barrett, who with a big engine, who's going to go the full um, the full 80. So a really good makeup of the forward pack. I think there's a couple of really underrated areas in this forward pack as well. So particularly the scrum. We know the line-out has been operating really, really well. And that line-out will challenge um, the spring box for the full 80 with Sam Whitelock coming on in off the bench. But... The first half scrum, I expect the All Blacks will give a really, really good account of themselves. I mean, DeGroot with the likes of um, Brody Retallick and, and um, Shannon Frizzell there behind him, he just seems to get a bit of an extra lift. And I think, you know, with the likes of DeGroot, Taylor, Lomax, um, who have been going very, very well at scrum time, as I mentioned, uh, got over the top of the Irish scrum, which is a big call, got over the top of the Springboks, uh, sorry, the, um, the Pumas scrum, which was probably expected, but I just think it's an area of the game that people are not talking about, and is the All Blacks' ability to compete at scrum time, and I expect they will give a very good account of themselves in that first half. And then we go to the generals. So Aaron Smith, Richie Moanga, they are going to be crucial to the outcome of this game, but we know also that the All Blacks play with a dual playmaker pivot either side of the ruck, so you can expect Bowden Barrett and Richie Moanga to share the load there in terms of the first receiver and playmaker options. And what else I love about this team is... The options around tactical kicking, around um, you know how they will play for territory. You've got Aaron Smith, obviously, with the box kick option. You've got Richie Moanga or Bowden Barrett either side of the ruck. If this gets into a kicking duel, you've got Richie Moanga who defends back towards um, towards fullback and will be sort of that first person to cover and take the kick and potentially return it. He can look inside for Bowden Barrett, who will be roaming at the middle of the field. And Bowden Barrett's ability to find space in behind the line, give those contested kicks. He's got a fantastic combination there with Will, with Will Jordan. Obviously putting up those mid-range kicks in behind the defensive line and allowing a Will Jordan to run and contest those high balls. I expect a lot of that to come. Um, and I expect the All Blacks, after the blueprint from England, could really find some success in that. And then you've got the likes of Geordie Barrett with a big boot, big touch finders. But what I love most about those four names that I mentioned is that you look back at the game against Ireland and the All Blacks really mixed and matched who was kicking. It was Geordie Barrett kicking for distance with the touch finders. It was uh, Bowden Barrett looking for space in behind the Irish line. It was it was Richie Moanga and um, and Aaron Smith with the exits from their own twenty two. So and then when we look at the goal kicking, a lot's been made about Richie Moanga's goal kicking, but Geordie Barrett gives you that ability to kick from deep. He also tends to take some of the right side um, touch line conversion. So let's look out and see if that happens. And then Richie Moanga takes more of the general sort of um, range goal kicking or penalty options. So. If they do start mixing and matching the kickers, I think that's a real benefit to the All Blacks. I think it takes the load off of some of, you know, some of the players. It means Moanga can play a little bit more freely, um, and same too for others where they are sharing the load on the kicks. 
con, you know, you sort of contrast that to the Springboks, and a lot of their kicking will be structured around nine and ten, and that's fine because they're experienced players who are used to playing that style and sort of, you know, moving their their forwards around the track. But the All Blacks have so many more options there from a tactical kicking, from a goal kicking perspective. One thing that hasn't really been spoken about much is what if this game goes close? We've seen the Springboks with, you know, two one point victories. Uh, we saw that game. Ireland versus the All Blacks go close in terms of four-point winning margin. Who's going to take the drop goals here? What I will say is the best kicker on the field for me is a Andre Pollard. He showed how dangerous he is from deep. Very, very accurate in anywhere in the um, in the half. So, you know, he's probably the best of the kickers on ground. But who's going to give you that option for the drop goal? We saw Bowden Barrett go for a drop goal against Ireland. But Andre Pollard is definitely definitely good at the drop goals so it's going to be interesting if it does get close do either team have the game winners to really break it i know the springboks do and we have seen Bowden barrett go for a number of drop goals but will they have the ability to win the game if they need to off the boot i think they probably do both teams have the experience that at least those two kickers will be composed if that big moment comes and then you've got the likes of talia and will jordan so i mentioned about will jordan's ability under the high ball will he break the record in this game Let's see. I mean, uh, this this game could be anything. It could be wide open. It could be um. It could be tight. It could go close to the end. So, it's hard to know whether or not he will break the record. Um, but I will give you my full thoughts on this when I do my preview um, and prediction final episode. Talia, you can expect in and around the ruck to be looking for work to be putting those um, big forwards on notice and on the back foot. Now to the to the reserves. Interesting makeup here in terms of experience and youth, and definitely a defensive-minded sort of selections. I wonder if the inclusion of Nepolalala, who is a big body, a big defensive body, um, and obviously brings experience. But you look at the two front rowers here, big physical guys. So Tamaiti Williams, obviously 146 kgs, 1.92 meters. Um, Nepolalala, I haven't looked at the stats, but he's a big, big guy as well. And they'll bring physicality and they will need it. So I think that selection is part of the... The way that the All Blacks are going to go try and counter the 7-1 split, um, they still want to be winning collisions, winning the breakdown, and winning the go-forward battle late in the game with those two. Where they will come into question is the scrum time. And I think the advantage definitely goes to the Springboks in terms of the scrum with Trevor Inyakani, Oxen Chair, as great as he went against England. Um, Williams is going to be under a lot of a lot of pressure. Nepal Alala struggled against Ireland, so... But it's going to come down to accuracy at the end of the day. It is rain forecast, but I just have seen the error rates have been low for the All Blacks. So will the second unit scrum play a major role in this game? The All Blacks will be trying to reduce error rates so it doesn't. The Springboks will be looking at options to engage these forwards, both to operate the scrum, which is probably their benefit there towards the end of the game, as well as to try and um, tire these All Blacks forwards out. Other big discussion points. Samisone Tokiaho comes in. Um, for Dan Coles, who has played his last game in the All Blacks jersey. And, you know, Foster having to have that discussion, he said it's one of the more difficult ones that he's had in his career. Um, but credit to him. You know, he's he's really stuck behind his principles here, what he wants to achieve, and he's not afraid to make the big calls. I just think when I look at the squad selection, to a large extent, Fozzie has held his nerve. He hasn't been swayed by the 7-1 split. He hasn't been swayed by the experienced campaigners and the farewell fairy tale stories right he is sticking to his nerve on what he believes will win this rugby world cup and credit goes to him um and one thing on dalton papali'i um obviously high work rate and great tackle accuracy so you know there's a time there he was 100 percent tackle success and they're going to really need it as they go to the back end of this game. And if the game does open up a little bit, we'll talk about Damian McKenzie in a second. But Dalton Papali is equally as good with ball in hand as a link player and has a lot of pace. So if the game opens up, then someone like Papali, uh, Toke Aho as well, um, obviously great ball carrier, could really inject something towards the end. And then we've got Damian McKenzie now. The great thing about Damian McKenzie is he can change the picture that's presented to the opposition and the defense. He can run the ball, he can run the edges, and he can spark something. So I think the All Blacks will definitely use him. I'd like to see them inject him a little bit earlier in the piece. Don't give him that last 10 minutes. Let's see what he can do with 20 minutes, right? And it's going to really depend on the how the game is flowing, how important the generals are. But if there's an opportunity to chase the game, or if there's a need to chase the game, I should say, or an opportunity to open things up, then maybe a McKenzie earlier is a good option. Christian ALB provides some defensive steel there 
for the All Blacks. Um, I want to see Cam Royguard because I just thought that attacking Spark could really give the All Blacks a lift. But they've gone with Christie. I understand the logic. Defensively, he's great. And I can't argue with it. And with that, guys, we are set up for one of the best World Cup finals in recent memory. So I'm going to leave it there in terms of the All Blacks. Let me know what you guys think. And I'm going to give you one more episode in the preview and prediction. Right, That is coming later tonight. And I'll give you my ultimate prediction with all those factors considered that I've covered over the four parts of this preview series. I hope you guys are as excited as I am and enjoy the rest of the build-up. I will see you guys soon.